Hi, it's Hopkey. In this screencast, what I want to do is show you the preference settings panels and the settings that I like to use. Now, obviously, you can find about you can find out about all of the settings within the documentation, but I just want to show you what I would ch change and why I change them. So for the Mac, I click Pano 2 VR Preferences. On the PC, it would be File Settings. That opens up the Preferences or Settings panel. Okay, um, if you've got the uh, win window a bit narrow, you've got these keys so you can scroll across the tabs or you can open up the window a little bit wider to see them all. Right, okay, cool. So let's start off then. Under the General tab, um, sometimes I use the Show Offline Help. Now, if I click OK and click help, you'll see that we open up our website's documentation page. If I find myself in the middle of a desert with no internet access, um, which may happen at some point, I can choose to show offline help. And this does exactly what it says on the tin. If I now select help, I see all the offline documentation that comes with Pano 2 VR. Therefore, I no longer need internet access and I can still get help if I need it. So that's quite cool. Okay, the next tab that I play with is the um, include beta versions. Um, with this deselected, you'll only get um, notified about new stable releases. With this selected, uh, when we bring out a new version and it's a beta, then you'll also be notified about that as well, which is pretty cool. Right, the other tab, or the other thing, which I don't really select, but I think it's important that you guys should know this, is the backup. Pano 2 VR backs up its project and skin files once every 10 minutes. Um, so if you had a problem, and you open up Pano 2 VR, and it's been corrupted because, I don't know, you had a power cut halfway through saving or something like that, and you've lost all your data, what you can do is come here, select folder, and, and then open up the auto backup folder. And what Pano 2 VR does is once every 10 minutes creates a backup file of your project. Now um, it saves up to five. And so when the next one comes in, the oldest one drops off. So it is time critical. So if you've forgotten about this and you've spent half a day fiddling about trying to find ways of getting your files back, then chances are you've, you've run out of backups but you know once you know it's here you open it up you find which is your latest backup it's um you can do that easy enough because of the file name is done in date and it does hours minutes and seconds there you go so that's makes it easier to find and how you use this is you find the newest one select it copy it go to your project folder paste it in and then use the backup file as your project you open it up, make sure everything is, is great and it's all working and you've not lost anything or lost up to a few minutes at least. Then what you can do is then delete the corrupted file and then rename this as your new project. And you do exactly the same thing with skins. Okay, cool. Right, um, the last thing I want to show you here is the remove key button. This is quite cool if you've updated your computer and you need to um, deactivate Pano 2 VR and move to a new computer, you just click this button to remove the license key and then you can license the new one. Also, if you're on standard, uh, the standard version of Pano 2 VR and you want a Trial Pro, clicking this button will drop the key out of Pano 2 VR, sending it back to Trial Mode, which then allows you to select Trial Pro and to see what that's all about. Um, but be aware that when you click this, you will need to put the key back in. So if you don't know where your key is, find it before you use this button right looking at the next tab i tend to use this quite often and it's not so much as a selection as doing something i quite i quite often save skins and 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 i you know supersede them and i want to delete old ones and the fastest way to get to your skins directory in fact the fastest way to get to any of these directories is to open up the files tab right button click in the file path and then you can select for the Mac, open in Finder. For the PC, open in Explorer. And I can double click and enter the skins directory. And I can delete uh, whichever ones I want or change whichever I want he uh, ones here. So that's quite good. The other thing that I would probably change here is I sometimes use standard version for testing. And if I'm making a two or three node tour, um, basically the default file name for the XML file is Pano. 
So if you've got three projects in the same folder, you can start overwriting your XML files. But what you can do here is tell Pano2VR to use, say, a placeholder $n. Um, if you want to know more about placeholders, please check out our website. Again, there's probably a link going to be at the bottom of this video. Um, but basically, the placeholder $n picks up the input file name um, or the input image file name, and that's what it uses for the XML file, so you won't overwrite them. So that's quite a handy thing to, to know. Okay, the next tab is to do with the web server. Now, Pano2VR has a built-in web server, so when you click the Open Output button, you're actually opening through the web server, hence why we don't have any troubles opening up uh, locally um, projects for you to view, um, because we're going through a web server. Um, now, the default is only this computer will be able to see that. If I deselect this, what Pano2VR will do is when you've opened up the output and you're using the built-in web server, it's broadcasting that across the whole of the old network. So if you've got devices like phones and tablets on there, you only have to select um, the address to view them. Now the address, if I just click OK here to close this, um, if you go to Tools Integrated Web Server, you'll see that there is this address here. And if you type that into your uh, phone or tablet connected to the same network, you will see the panorama. So this is great for uh, for testing locally, if you like, on various devices before you upload. Okay, now the next thing that I change under um, uh, web server is the auto. Now this is the port. Now the port changes. It's the last few uh, digits on, on the address. Now that changes every time I restart the web server. Um, but if you type in a fixed port, say, I don't know, 8000, 8080 is also a good port number, but I use 8000 for Pano 2VR, 8080 for Object 2VR to keep them separate. But basically what happens is that address I showed you earlier, the port is now a fixed number, so you can do things like bookmark the address in your phone and your tablet and your other computers on the network. So when you open up the output, in Pano 2 VR on your computer, you can then pick up the device, go to the bookmark and then view it. So that's quite handy to know. Right, the next tab is for images. Now, I do quite a bit here. Um, I change the interpolation filter. Personally, I select Lancos 3. Now, this does depend on your workflow to which filter that you would use. Um, Basically, Lancos 3 gives me a sharper image uh, for, for, for me and my workflow. But if you obviously use a DLSR camera, you're taking raw images, you bring them into something like Lightroom, you take away chromatic aberration and say fringing, uh, then you add a little bit of sharpening and create a TIFF. You then take all those TIFFs and put them into your um, stitching software. You'll create, you'll create an echo rectangular image. Again, probably add a bit of sharpening. So the time you bring the echo rectangular into Pano 2 VR, the last thing you want is Pano 2 VR to add even more sharpening and to over sharp your image. If that's the case and you use a lot of uh, sharpening within um, the processing of the raw to echo rectangular, then you would use something like Mitchell that st doesn't sharpen as much and leaves the image a little bit soft, um, which would be fine for, for sharpened input images. But for something like the Ricoh Theta um, that doesn't go through this sharpening process, then you can use Blackman Sync or something like that. I prefer to use Lancos 3 and I use this across the board. I find it works better for me for my um, Ricoh images and for my DLSR images as well. It's just it's just a filter that I like to use. So my output for me is nice and crisp and it's the and it's the sort of output I want to see. But again, purely your preference. Okay. Not something I change, but whilst we're here, something worth mentioning. The memory hint size. Pano 2 VR will use roughly half of your physical RAM. What this does, it, it, obviously Pano 2 VR can do a lot more in RAM, so it runs quicker. Okay, cool. But if you use Pano 2 VR a lot in the background, say for droplets and for converting images from echo rectangles to cubes, etc., then you might want to sort of limit how much RAM Pano 2 VR is using if you're using other applications at the same time, say Photoshop, and you want that to use more RAM or, or 
other graphics applications. So what you might want to consider is dropping how much memory Pano 2 VR would use in the background, allowing your other applications to use more RAM. What this does mean though is that you'll probably use a lot more disk swapping when you're doing your task, but it just slows it down a bit. But if it's running in the background, you probably wouldn't even notice. If you don't use any, if you don't use Pano 2 VR in the background and you're always using it um, as the core application because that's the work your workflow, then leave this pretty much alone. Okay. Um, the other thing I would select here is save TIFF files compressed. With modern machines and the speed of them, you might as well select it. Um, older machines that you know when you when you're outputting your your, your your panorama as it was compressing the TIFF files it was um, obviously it would it would slow the machine down but with modern machines now I just I just select it so that's that right next tab FFmpeg now FFmpeg is a plugin that we need when we are um, creating uh, videos from our animations now what I tend to do is I would go to the, um, if I click this link, go to our website, you would download whichever FFmpeg for your operating system. I normally put this in my applications folder for the Mac, and then I would choose to select it here so Pano 2 VR knows where to look to use that plugin. Um, yeah, that's all I do. You only need to do it the once, but you do need this to have um, an MPEG for video output for the animation output. Okay, uh, next tab, EXIF data. I don't really touch anything in here. I like to use all the information coming in from the image. Skin editor, I do select this. Remember, open properties panels. What this is, if I just say okay to that, if I go to Pano 2 VR skin editor, select say this first folder, you'll see these panels are all collapsed. If I open them up and then close the skin editor and open it back up again and select the folder, you'll see they've collapsed again. So if I'm in there, in and out, um, changing things like the um, I don't know, radius of a, a rectangle and things like that, it can take time because I've got to keep opening up panels. But with this selected, so go back to skin, with it remembered, basically if I go back and do the same thing, so open up the panels, now when I close the skin, open, uh, skin editor, when I open it back up again and select the uh, folder the panels are left open. I just find it quicker. I don't have to keep opening and closing these panels Okay, so that's why I do that Okay um, Next thing then um, Don't really change anything else under here under the advanced tab now. I do change a few things here um, I like to change the use width as output factor or use pi as output factor. Pano 2 VR by default divides the uh, echo rectangular by 4 to give you your cube face sizes. If you select divide by pi, you get a few more pixels per cube face. For me, I think that's a better looking image, so therefore I like to select it. Okay, the next one is tour browser and show internal node ID. Now, being a bit of a skin junkie, I tend to use the internal um, or, or the node IDs um, for different projects. Now, the node ID is the ID that Pano 2 VR gives an input image. And this is what it uses within, as I say, internally of Pano 2 VR. We see nice little names, but Pano 2 VR uses node 1, node 2, whatnot. So if you're doing something, you know, um, in the skin where you want to you know, store a node in say the user data, you would store the node ID. Now the way that you know you find this, um, as an example, if I just hover over this particular node, you see, you see this tool tip, you've got some information there, but I don't know what node it is. So if I go to Pano 2 VR preferences, under advanced, show internal node ID, click OK. Um, next time I hover over it, I now see the third item down is it's telling me that it's node ID is node two. So if I wanted to store this data somewhere, I know that I would store node two. So yeah, it just it's it's a way of finding out what node is what with inside Pano 2 VR. If you're into skins, this will be useful. If it's if you're not, then it won't. Right. Okay. Um, the other thing I change in the advanced tab and the last thing is show map labels in tour browser and map. Now really for street view uploads but it's really useful as well for large tours um, if i click the map button or the map tool you'll see that i've only got two nodes so therefore it's easy to find out which node is what belongs to what pin by clicking on it and you'll see that the radar beam jumps 
Um, now, if I've got a tool with 50 input images and I've got 50 map pins on there, it's very difficult to to see which pin represents which node is in my tour. So what we can do then is if I close this, is select this under advanced, show map labels in tour browser and map. So basically what it's gonna do is give me some labels that I can identify with. So if I click on the map, now you'll see that in the tour browser I'll get A, B, and if I have more panos, C, D, E, F, etc. And now you can see that the map pins have got the same um, labeling as well so you can quickly and easily determine which panorama belongs to which map pin okay they are all the settings that i would change um, as i said before if you want to know what all the settings are please check out the uh, documentation um, but yeah that's all what i change thanks for watching